Welcome. We're going to start with an introduction to this work. So it's kind of useful to know. Does anybody, anybody know uh, how old the Earth is? About a few billion years old. Three, four. What's a billion years, right? <laughs> so um, back around uh, uh, 500 million years ago, there was a phenomenon that started on the Earth. Prior to that, all life was in the form of single-celled creatures, okay? Now, these single-celled creatures, okay, that inhabited the Earth for way longer than we ever have, okay, they possessed intelligence. They possessed knowledge. They knew to move towards safe environments and away from toxic environments. Toxic or something that might eat them or harm them, right? So this is an order of the universe. Because a lot of times, we, what, this is what we want to know. We want to know what's the order of the universe. If we really want to handle ourselves in the, in the universe, <laughs> on Earth, in our lives, we kind of want to understand how, the, how this all works, right? So about 500 years ago, these single-celled creatures started a team. Okay? So in teams, this is a, 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 something that we do all the time, right? Like if we all team together, we might be able to beat Michael Jordan in basketball, right? So people team together to try to get an advantage, right? So that same phenomenon, phenomenon is still going on today, all right? So in different parts of the world, that teaming of single-celled creatures is still happening, okay? So fast forward now, you've got all sorts of different creatures that have evolved. So when we look at the human body, okay, what are we looking at? Right? We're looking at a body that's composed of about 50 trillion cells, give or take a few trillion. I mean, that's, that's kind of crazy, 50 trillion cells and about 50 trillion microbes as well, in addition to that. All different kinds of microbes. Everybody fears like, oh, somebody's got a cold. I, if I go near them, I'm going to breathe that in. Let's not worry about it. We breathe in about 60,000 different pathogens every day. So really what we want to do is we want to focus on our own bodies, where, where the source of these pathogens are or this disease. People think that these pathogens cause disease. No, pathogens are part of us. Okay, so we don't have to worry about like controlling the world. We are the masters of a universe of 100 trillion cells and microbes right here. But yet we don't see ourselves as being like separate. We don't see ourselves as being like a part of like 100 trillion. What do we see ourselves as? One, right? We give ourselves a name, Andrew. Wow. So then I identify with the name Andrew my whole life, right? So it's interesting because what is that? What is that sense of I? So that's what we're going to get to, right? So it's interesting when we look at this as like a reflection of life, because what's happening on Earth is happening on, in the universe. So that we are a team, that we've evolved to this team, that we've evolved to this team has meant that every creature that has ever uh, lived on the Earth and every one of our relatives and everything that they have learned have contributed to who we are, that have made us so resilient that we're able to live about 100 years right now. It's pretty amazing. And so everything that has happened before is in the field. So what happens to these single-celled creatures? Let's say um, they have to try to decide, is this safe or is this dangerous? And they make a move. They make the wrong move and they die. Well, the next single-celled creature that comes along all of a sudden might, whoa, not make that move. Intuitively, they get a sense, ooh, this is dangerous. So it's in the field. So we all have access to this intuition. And you see, the intuition magnifies exponentially as we um, evolve. So what we are looking at is the evolution of consciousness. So we'll discuss Dr. Hawkins' work a little bit more subsequently. But the levels of consciousness of everything that exists can be determined. So single-celled creatures, bacteria, they have a level of consciousness of one on this scale of one to a thousand. It's an exponential scale, a logarithmic scale. I revert to it often because it's a great teaching tool. 
It's not a judgmental tool. It's just showing the evolution of consciousness. And so as we team together, the, the consciousness evolves. Okay? So as humans, we have choices. <laughs> and the level of consciousness can vary greatly. And it's a capacity that, that exists in the field of human consciousness. Okay? So it's interesting to kind of see how far we can extend, just for shits and giggles, just how far can we extend the concept of a team? Right? Because we see ourselves as being alone sometimes. But are we alone? Are all these creatures that exist in us, are they alone? So we'll do some things later to show that we are like the master in charge of all these little creatures that we call our body, right? So that we could see it. But how far can we extend that concept of team? So I discussed this with probably everybody here before. Let's try to see how big the universe is because it's kind of hard to imagine how big the universe is, right? So if, well, let's, let's start with the Voyager. We, we, we discussed this last week. How fast is, you guys are familiar with Voyager? The spaceship that uh, NASA launched and it's going out and it took pictures of all the planets and then all of a sudden discovered all these things that didn't know existed. We didn't know that they existed. You know, so let me, let me revert back to something. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Okay. So let's say this little happy face ball here. This represents everything that we know. Okay. Nice. Okay. What happens with levels of consciousness as we were describing, as we team up, we, we form new teams, as we evolve ourselves, all of a sudden our level of knowledge, we might have some kind of realization, all of a sudden we're like, oh my God, I know so much more than I did before. You know, so then all of a sudden, you know, we went from level consciousness one to level consciousness two. Now we know 10 times as much as we did before, right? So then we keep growing, we keep expanding, right? And then all of a sudden we know so much more than we did before, right? And so this is how that level of consciousness works. Level of consciousness one, level of consciousness two is 10 times as big. Level of consciousness three is 10 times as big as the one before. So by the time you get up to a thousand, you're gonna be looking at like a, a huge ball. So on this scale of consciousness that goes from one to a thousand, um, we can map the scale of consciousness of everyone and everything that's ever existed. So the great avatars, once they've learned as much as they possibly could learn as humans, the great avatars that were the basis for every religion, uh, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, they calibrated at a thousand. It was like a state of all knowingness. That's like the most that a human can, can uh, expect. <laughs> no. That's not expect, don't, sorry. When nobody here is, is, should expect to be Jesus or Buddha in this lifetime. But it's the, the greatest capacity there is, okay? For a human. So, it kind of helps because all these great avatars kind of wanted to express what that all-knowingness is. And it's very difficult to describe what is omniscience, what is omnipotence, and what is omnipresence. Because every religion will say that God, or the ultimate, the supreme, whatever you want to call the highest intelligence and power, is omniscient, meaning all-knowing, all-powerful, all-powerful, and omnipresent in everything and everyone. So we're going to go over this repeatedly, and I wanted to introduce it right from the get-go because that's kind of what we're doing here. As levels of consciousness increase, we experience more of the omniscience, omnipotence, and not omnipresence. And it's a matter of experiencing it, not about talking about it, it's about experiencing it. So, let's try to get an idea of how massive 
the universe is, what exists, just so we can kind of just scratch the surface of what omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence is. Okay? So, the Voyager travels around, and it's been going for decades now, and it finally um, got by the solar system. It, it was the first thing that humans ever launched that escaped the solar system. It was traveling at 10 kilometers a second. 10 kilometers a second. So it takes me an hour to run 10 kilometers, right? So imagine running 10 kilometers in a second. Zoom, zoom. I mean, that thing's going so fast you can barely see it, right? So it took years, years for the Voyager traveling at that speed to get out of the solar system. So imagine looking at the solar system. It's the sun. And it's basically like if you were looking at it from a distance, there'd be a glow around the sun. Okay, and there's like a bunch of little planets all around there, right? So that's, that's like one star. You know, when you look up in the sky and you see millions of stars, that's just one. And so that's how far it took. So let's, let's, see, let's see if we could try to really get a feel for the massiveness of the universe. Um, how fast does light travel? Who knows this? 300,000 kilometers per second, per second. Like 10 kilometers a second, that's like, woof. But 300,000 kilometers a second, imagine how fast that is. So from the sun to the earth, how long does it take for a ray of light to travel from the sun to the earth? Eight minutes, Eight minutes. yay. <laughs> All right, so that's how far that is. The earth, to the sun. it's far. Eight minutes, 300,000 kilometers a second, it takes eight minutes. So imagine jumping on your uh, light cycle. You're on, you're on your light cycle, you start at the sun, you go to the earth, and you're traveling 300,000 kilometers per second, wind's blowing through the hair. <laughs> All right, so now you wanna keep going. You wanna keep going as fast as you can, <laughs> speed of light. <laughs> and have you ever looked up in the sky and seen the Milky Way? Everybody's seen, it's kind of like this foggy thing that extends maybe about this far out. Okay, so traveling at the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. How long will it take us to travel from one end of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, to the other, to that space? Traveling 300,000 kilometers per second, how long will it take us to get from here to here? Any guesses? Don't give me the answer if you know. <laughs> What's that? Two days. Two days. 100,000 years. Two days is close. <laughs> right. So, 100,000 years to travel from one side of the galaxy to the other. So, when Hubble went up and started taking pictures, it was pretty amazing. Got up above the Earth. So it wasn't subject to the fields of Earth, and it could see clearly, and took a picture and went whew. And you could Google these pictures, they're all there. And it was so clear that they could just see how distant the universe went. And science, scientists estimated the Milky Way, that's one galaxy which the Earth is a part of. The Earth and the Sun is a part of, and we're part of the Milky Way galaxy. Scientists estimated there were 200 billion galaxies based on that one picture. So when you look all around, all you see is all these galaxies. But really that's not accurate. It's a lot more than that. So Dr. Hawkins did consciousness research and we'll go into that in a bit. But there's multiple universes. It's infinite. So omniscience, omnipotence, it's infinite. So, in a tiny advanced theoretical physicist determined that in one square centimeter of empty space, there is more energy than all the energy needed to create all the universes. So if we want to touch, scratch the surface of what omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence is, we have to get to that space 
because everything that exists had to come from something. So imagine that. In one cubic centimeter of empty space exists more energy than everything needed to create that massive universe that we're part of. So it's difficult to describe allness. So we're going to go on a couple more minutes. I originally said we we're going to do this for 15 minutes, but I think we're, these are going to be like 17 or 18 minute segments here um, for teaching purposes. Um, so if we want to scratch the surface of what um, we call God, it's way God or allness or our almighty. It's way beyond what we can even grasp. So that's what we want to do here. We want to try and experience that. And um, it's necessary to get beyond the mind in order to do that. So we want to ask ourselves, how far can we extend the concept of our team? Because when we hear people speak spiritual talk, everybody speaks of oneness and allness. Oneness and allness, one with everything that is, that power, that, can we even imagine what that is? So we want to get out of talking and into experiencing. So how far can we extend that concept of team? So this is where we start. So samyana means voyaging together. So we're all part of a team that we're here. We're all joined. There's some purpose. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here together. So sometimes we join all sorts of teams. We're part of family teams. We're parts of sports teams. How far can we extend that concept of team? You know, um, Trump and Obama, they really went at it hard, right? And then Obama probably said, uh, the most intelligent thing that he ever said in his life, to me anyways, after he lost. And, you know, uh, he was not happy. But he said, well, ultimately, we're all part of the same team. Yes. So everything that happens, okay, everything that ever happens to us, just like the single-celled creatures, even if we make mistakes, it benefits the next one that comes along. So we can't screw up if we tried. Everything that we do is going to benefit those that come subsequently. Everything that our parents did, everything that our great-grandparents did, everything that every human has done, every mistake ever, ever made benefits us. Everything that we learn benefits us. This is how we're in it together. So how far can we extend that concept of team? Can we extend the concept of team beyond religion? Because this is what we do. We say, okay, here's... Christianity, okay? And, or this is like a different part of Christianity. This is Catholicism and this is um, Protestantism. <laughs> Protestants. And so we're, we're all, if this is everything that we believe, this is everything that we believe, it's hard to see outside the bubble. So, if this represents everything that we know or everything that our group knows, Everything that there is yet to know is represented by everything outside of this. You see? So, a lot of times we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves to our groups or groups of beliefs. So how far can we extend the concept of team? Can we extend it beyond religion? Can we extend it beyond culture? Can we extend it beyond our family? That I'm part of a greater team. Everybody here has felt lonely at some point in time. Are we lonely? How can we be lonely? When we extend ourselves beyond that, beyond the limitation of being the leader of 50 trillion cells and 50 trillion microbes. So, what we're going to do in this work is try to experience the depth of what we are and see, and it's going to be a challenge, how far can we extend that concept of team and allness. Okay, that's the end of part one.